everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. We got a really big show for you tonight. One that's really close to my heart, near and dear, as they say. You see, the dictionary, the dictionary, dictionary says that comfort means to console or soothe. How sweet. <laughs> when I say comfort, I mean fried chicken. <laughs> Mac and cheese. So guess what we're doing tonight? Both. We're going to get so comfortable. And then you never see this dish anymore, this comfort dish. You know that chili con carne, chili con queso thing? I don't know whatever happened to that thing, but we're going to do both of them tonight, too. Yeah. And one of my childhood favorites, crab meat stuffed shrimp. Oh, yeah, man. And of course, as I said earlier, something ooey and gooey. Old M's kicked up macaroni and cheese. Yeah. And then I'm going to show you a terrific, one of my favorites, a buttermilk fried chicken. Oh! Oh! Aren't you feeling pretty comfortable? Yeah. Speaking about comfortable, we got Doc Gibbs in the MLI band. Hey, it's comfort cooking right here on Emerald Live. because we got Doc Gibbs in the Everland Band. Oh, yeah. How you doing, folks? Good. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Where are you all from? Connecticut. Sharon, Connecticut. Good to have you. Ladies? Hi. Let me guess. Queens. 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 <laughs> we love that. Thank you. We love Queens. Chili con carne, that would mean meat, as opposed to con queso, which yeah. means cheese. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I got it instantly. Now, what I started doing here is that, with the help, of course, of the awesome Food Network Kitchen, Leslie and Krista, I started browning some ground lean beef. It can be chuck, it can be sirloin. Whatever you might want to do is ask the butcher that you buy at the supermarket or if you buy it from the butcher, you want it to at least be 80% lean. Sometimes they try to sneak in that, you know. Yeah. What do I got here? So we're going to brown this off. Let's talk about some other ingredients. Once the onions, uh, excuse me, once the beef gets brown, I've got some chopped onions. I've got about 20 cloves of garlic in here. Some green bell pepper. And then what I have here is chili powder, a little oregano, and cumin. I love this stuff. It's a little cumin. Then we're going to add a little salt, a little cayenne, a little tomato paste, tiny bit of sugar to bring down the acidity of the tomatoes, and we'll get into that in a second. All right, so we're browning the meat. Brown, 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 brown. Oh, yes, yes, easy. Don't frighten me, we've just begun. You know we got Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab Band in here, right? All right, now, brown, 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 brown. Scared, 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 scared. All right. Now what we're going to do is this, folks. We're going to add the onions and the bell peppers and season it. It's like building a house. It's kind of like the foundation. That's what we're going to do here. 
We're going to season it with some salt. Oh, so happy. <laughs> some fresh ground pepper. Oh, yeah. Hey. We'll add a little cayenne, too, in here, just to kick it up a little bit, OK? There you go, kicked up. We had a question also on that foodnetwork.com, whether you should put beans in concani. Anybody think you should put beans in here? Really? It's the wrong answer. I'm just telling you what that dot com thing said. All right, look, we're gonna cook this now, three or four minutes, add the 20 cloves of garlic. We're gonna add the chili powder, the oregano, the cumin, happy, happy. happy, happy. Little sugar. Now we're gonna add the tomato paste in here, which is gonna give it a little richness and a little color. Okay? <laughs> then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add now a little water. And we're gonna just sort of mix these nice flavors in here. And then, this is what we're going to do. While this begins to start simmering, it's going to take about 30 minutes to simmer. But what we're going to do is, I like to take some whole tomatoes. And, you know, you can do it with your hand. Works for me. Yeah. What's a squeeze amongst friends? You know what I mean? Hey. Or, you know, if that offends you, you can take the potato masher. I mean... So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze the tomatoes and add them in here. When we come back, another notch. Back in. Chili con carne. See, this is what happens after the tomatoes are in, and you let it simmer, medium, medium, low heat. Let that evaporation go and let the flavors kick in. This is what it looks like after about 30, 35 minutes, okay? And you can use this for a lot of stuff. I don't see it a lot anymore. You can put it in little Frankfurter bowl, uh, buns, you know? Serving it with chips, you know, like a chip and dip thing. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Next thing, I've got pobleno pepper. Are oh, you playing with my emotions right now? <laughs> and what we're going to do is either on an electric burner, gas burner, you can also do it in the oven. We want to sort of char these. We want to blister the skin, okay, which I'll show you. And then... We're going to get this intense flavor and also this delicious smokiness in there, which the Pobleno has, you know, natural smoke inside of it. But what we're going to do is we've got this little skin that we want to try to... See how it's starting to blister like that? While that's happening, we're going to take some onion with some oil. We're going to add a little salt to that. A little cayenne pepper. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> and then what we're gonna do, while that's cooking, see how our pepper's doing. You see how it's blistering like that? Yeah. So you're gonna do that whole thing. It's gonna look like this and you let it cool. You see, and then that's the skin. That skin is what we wanna take off. Can you see that, you? See that? That's what we wanna take off there. Okay? And then what we have is now them just chopped, no seeds. 
We're going to add them in here. And then we're going to add a little bit of flour. And what that flour is going to do is kind of give it sort of a little roux, if you will. Okay, we're going to add some flour. We're going to cook that flour for about two minutes so it doesn't taste like flour. We're going to add some tomato diced, a couple of romas, depending on size. Going to add that in there. See you now. By adding the flour, how it's gotten thick like that. That's good. Now we're going to take some milk, or you're going to take some cream, or both, half and half. Now watch this. We're going to add this in here, and it's going to kind of stop making that like a cream sauce, you see? Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Now, once this cooks for a minute, I'm gonna lower the heat down. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna add two different cheeses. I got a cheddar that we've grated, as sharp as you like it, and I also got some of this jalapeno jack cheese. Now, we're going to mix this in here. Once you start mixing it in here and it starts melting, I think it needs a little bit more salt. What do you think, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> All right, now once it starts melting, you really lower the heat down very, very low. Watch this. I've got some corn tortillas. What I'm going to do is just sort of cut them. You can cut them in eighths. I'm going to cut them in quarters. Got some, those fancy blue tortillas with the blue corn. Get some vegetable oil, about 350 degrees. Oh yeah, babe, you make your own, <laughs> you make your own tortilla chips, you see? You make your own, you just put them in a little vegetable oil like this. They don't take very long. Nothing better than fresh tortilla chips. Then, you got the con carne ready, and we got the old con queso. Look at this. Here's what I like to serve with it. When I'm ready, oh yeah, babe. <laughs> How I like to serve this, let's check on our chips one more time. Oh yeah, nothing like it. You get them crispy like this. <laughs> Remember, whatever you fry, right? You got to season them when they come out of the fryer. Fresh tortilla chips. I mean, nothing better like it. I'm going to do a few more of these, and let me show you the finale. The finale for me, when you want to just sort of kick it up a notch, <laughs> I do this. I take the con carne and I do a little bit like this, you see? Then I take the old con queso and then I just sort of do a little of this or maybe a little of that. You with me so far? And then, take those fresh tortilla chips, and I just sort of put a few of those around, put a few more of these around like this. A little blue in here. And there you have it, right? even a little more comfortable when we kick it up another notch. Back in.
we're talking comfort food right now. Woo! Let me show you one of my childhood favorite shrimps. Crab meat stuffed. What we do is just start with a little bit of butter. And it starts foaming like this. Before it gets brown, you want to add some onion, a little bit of celery. Everything all right over there, folks? Some really small bell pepper. And we're going to just cook that. You see, just as it starts to get brown, it's got a little taste that it does. And then what we'll do is we're going to add a little bit of parsley like this. Hilda's happy now. And some garlic. Now, you want to add the garlic last because you don't want to burn it. You get a nice green color, fresh tasting. And then what we're going to do is we season this with a little bit of salt and some pepper. And you're going to let it cool. Be careful with him, ma'am. <laughs> Words can only describe. <laughs> so you let this cool. And then what we do is this. We've got some lump crab meat. OK? You know, somebody asked me on that uh, foodnetwork.com thing about lump crab meat versus pasteurized crab meat. Sometimes you can buy pasteurized crab meat that is also on ice. And really, it's OK. If, if, that's, if that's all you can get, then uh, as long as it's sealed and uh, it's real crab, it isn't like they're going to sell you real crab, as opposed to that imitation <laughs> crab that they have. <laughs> Excuse me. You know what I mean. Who wants to eat imitate? I mean, God. Why don't you just eat a tire? A bumper. Anyhow, sorry, I just... So once this cools, the onion... What we're going to do is we're going to add that to the lump crab meat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make it really happy. So, well, all right. Stick around. We're going to add a little bit of mayonnaise, not much, OK? A little mayonnaise. The juice of a lemon. Now, some people want less. If you like a lot of lemon, just use half. I add one egg. But what people do when they add eggs to bind things is they never sort of beat them. They just expect that the egg's just going to, like, <laughs> go in there, you know, and search down every piece of crab meat. So you got to whisk it a little bit, OK? Whew, glad I got that out of my system. Some hot sauce. <laughs> Worcestershire. Now, we'll fold this over. See? Folding it. Oh, it's looking good. Now, what a lot of people do to bind this is they'll add, and by the way, this, you, could, you could like turn this into crab cakes right now if you wanted to. It's just adding enough binder right now to get it together, and then you could form crab cakes. What I do, instead of breadcrumbs, I use these crackers. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. They'll be doing it on that other show, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I take them and I just grind them a little bit and I use these, okay? You see, I didn't add any salt so far because these have got a little salt. And you can always add. So look, we're gonna fold these over. Oh, let me tell you. I am... Happy, happy. OK, now, we got that. You want to make them crab cakes? Make them crab cakes. You want to make them stuffed shrimp? Emerald's favorite. Here's what you do. You peel the shrimp. How do you do that, you may say? Are we on Jerry Springer? I don't 
No, man. So, oh, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is you take the legs, and I leave the top one shell on from the tail, okay? Then the biggest question now after that is, well, do you devein them? Yes. yes, you devein them. So I go from the back here like this, you see? And not only do I split them open, but I also can devein them at the same time. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to layer these like in here. You with me so far? Okay, let me show you again. So we peeled it, split it, open it up. Same thing. Open it up. And then it kind of like make a little pocket like that. You see? Make a little pocket. That's what we want to do. Because then what we're going to do now is we're going to bring them over here, making this like little pocket. Yep. And then we're going to take our stuffing. We're going to season the shrimp. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to the first one and we're going to add the stuffing, you see? Oh, and the great thing is, folks, you can do this ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to cook over here. So the great thing about this, like for a dinner party, you could do this ahead of time or do this in the morning, okay? And then when you're ready, they take 15 minutes, wow. maybe 20. What I like to do, I just kind of add a little seasoning to them. Bam! Yeah. A little lemon juice. Yeah. 350, 375 in the oven when we're ready for dinner because when we come back, the dinner bell is gonna ring. Yeah. So stick around! Yeah. Doc Gibbs! Welcome back, folks. If you're just joining us, shame on you. <laughs> Emma Lagasse here, and we're cooking some comfort food tonight. Yeah. Speaking about comfort food, we've got the oven on about 375, and I've got those wonderful childhood memory baked stuffed shrimp. Take a peek of that. Just simmering in there, nice, nice. Now what we're going to do is another one of those great childhood deals, macaroni and cheese. I don't know why people make it so complicated. We're gonna, in a little pot here, we're gonna take some butter and melt this butter down. Well, you wouldn't wanna use oil for this. You know, there's some ruse that you can use oil if you're going to cook a roux longer, like for a gumbo or an etouffee, you could think about using oil for that, particularly if you're going to do a brown or chocolate type roux. But when you're doing things with seafood or something really delicate and fast, you generally use butter as the, as the fat for the, for the roux that you're going to use. Lard works good too, but you know, <laughs> that's another story. So when the butter gets melted, equal equal pots of flour and the butter, and we're gonna make just sort of what I call like a soft roux. What does that mean? You can see it in the pan. It's not, you know, it's not all like so thick you can't steer it. Now. <laughs> oh, I've been down the road with that guy. <laughs> what you should really do is invest in a good wooden spoon. That's the perfect thing for stirring like risottos and roux and things. It just really works. And there are stages of roux. Like right now is what's called a blonde stage. And then it'll go to sort of a peanut butter stage. 
And really what we want to do for this thing, because we're going to make first a cheese sauce, is really sort of at the blonde stage, which is about now. You can see how quick that that was. When you're working with roux, a couple of things to remember. Hot to cold or cold to hot. If you add hot to hot or cold to cold, you're going to get lumps. The other thing is, it'll never be at its full thickening power until it comes to a boil. Okay? So if you added the liquid in there and it's like so loose and gross, don't call 911 and freak out until it comes to the boil. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our milk in here. And we're going to start just sort of working the roux into this. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll go back and switch to the whisk. What happens is, depending on what kind of cookware you have, when you're working with like stainless like this, people wonder why. Sometimes they'll look at it and they'll go, well, my milk, it looks like it's gray. And that's because you're really sort of taking sort of some of the particles off of the cookware in the sides. So it's gross, yeah. When in doubt, non-stick. Oh, yeah. So sometimes I use the whisk to get the lumps out. Now, I'm showing you this because this is a basic cream sauce or bechamel, one of the mother sauces. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to season it with some salt because I don't know where you get your milk. Where I get mine, it don't come salted. <laughs> and I'm going to, for this exercise, I'm using cayenne pepper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, it's comfort food. You know, yeah. kick it up a little, you know. Yeah. <laughs> now... You'll see once this comes to a boil, as it's approaching, it's full thickening power. So now we're going to take this mother sauce and we're going to turn it into what is called a compound sauce, okay? I.e., cream sauce is a mother sauce. We're going to add cheese to this, make it into a cheese sauce, which becomes a compound sauce. I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> there are five mother sauces. I'm not going to go there right now. Just experience one the bechamel. All right. Macaroni, salted water. I cooked it. It still has a nice little a texture. It's not completely cooked out. It's a little al dente because we're going to cook it some more. Okay? Now, you see it's come to a boil. That's how thick we know it's going to be. And that's a good thickness for a cream sauce. But it ain't going to stay a cream sauce. We're going to make it a cheese sauce. So now we're going to add the cheese. We're going to add the cheese. Work the cheese in here. At this point, you really should turn the heat down to almost off. So we're going to get this cheese all nice and mixed in here. Want to taste it. Want to taste it now for, see the consistency of that? To coat a spoon. We're going to taste it to see salt, pepper. Oh, goodness. <laughs> a little more salt. <laughs> Why not a little more cayenne? Yeah. So now what I do is this. I just take the drained macaroni, season that up. Then... Take the cheese sauce. Okay. Then I take my spoon. Just make sure that everybody's happy in here. 350 degrees I have the oven on. See the consistency of that? Now, sometimes what I'll do to, you know, just kind of change the drill. If you use, like, smoked Gouda cheese, you got, like, this smoky macaroni and cheese. You know what I mean? Shh. All right, here's what I do. I take some breadcrumbs now. Right on top. This makes sort of a little seal. More cheese for me. He's a cheese freak. This is his brain on cheese. All right, 350. It's going to take about 25, no more than 30 minutes. 
That's what we're going to go in here. We're going in the oven with this. Come on. Check on our shrimp real quick. Oh, they're looking good. They're looking good. Oh, they're just a couple of minutes away. Which means when we come back, another notch! Yeah. Okay. I heard a couple of paradiddles come out of that yeah. thing. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse, and we've got our baked stuff shrimp in the oven, childhood memory, mac and cheese. Gonna show you a kicked up fried chicken, one of my favorites. But first, oh yeah, babe. I'm gonna show you a quick little uh, accoutrement. Take a little bit of olive oil. Pimentum weather, that's that crushed pepper. Let it fuse out, getting a little spicy. We'll add a little bit of garlic. Yeah. And then what I do is just take some kale. A lot of people don't really know what to do with kale. So I just kind of saute it. What? <laughs> this is a rough crowd. Just teasing. So what we're gonna do, you can do it either buttered kale. I like this olive oil, sort of like uh, people will do like broccoli rob, you know? Just kind of cook it. Now, doesn't it smell great? And what I do is I just take a little, just take a little bit of this, right in the old center like this, you see? Then, go get our baked shrimp. Oh, yeah. Where do you see these things? Look at that, huh? And then, generally what I'll do is I'll just take a couple of these. Take another one of these like this here. Yeah, one more, why not? One more of those, just like that. Go back for the crab meat. Put a little bit of that crab meat on there. Just take a little bit of red pepper. Little essence. Bam! <laughs> Gotta make some friends over there. All right. It's kind of rough doing fried chicken on the stove, but um, if you do it timely, not try to do what happens, most people try to do all the chicken at one time. That creates the oil to expand. The oil expands, gets on the stove, fire starts, then you decorate in your house, <laughs> maybe rebuilding it. So don't go there. You can see my oil right here, vegetable oil, thermometer. I'm at about 360 right now. You can see it's also less than half. It's about a third of the way full so that when it expands. One of my favorite comfort dishes is taking a chicken and have them cut it in an eighth, eight pieces. I season it. You don't have to use essence. You can use rubs. I put it in a bowl. Then I take salt. <laughs> fresh pepper. And then one of the great things is just pouring buttermilk. 
the day before, if you can. Do it the day before, let it sit, in the, put it in the refrigerator, little plastic wrap on it. Then, oh, it's magic. <laughs> I take flour, add some essence in there. <laughs> and then what I do is I take the chicken from the buttermilk right inside the dredged and dredge it inside the flour here. Get it all happy. Take that piece, dredge it right in there. And like I said, you know, you can, you can basically flour them all, but it's pretty hard, even in this Dutch oven that I have, it's pretty hard that you're gonna get all eight pieces. So what you do is you just fry it, and then um, you can always finish it in the oven, or you can always put it right back, the ones that you started at the end, to bring them up to the right temperature. All right, so look, I'm gonna start dredging all eight pieces, but I'm gonna start with four. And then what you wanna do is just Slightly shake off the excess. We're going to put that in our oil. All right, we're frying some chicken. When we come back, oh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Back in. I want to take a little bit of the fear out of um, this comfort food, folks. Let's get back to the chicken for a second. First four pieces. What happens is that, you know, you can't get all eight, 12, whatever you're going to in there. Don't call 911, right? You see, what I do is I just set up a little rack like this. Can you get a shot of this here? You see? I get a little rack like this. Drippings can go down. Leave it in there. It's going to be perfect. Then look at this. Mac and cheese, 25-ish minutes or so. See how it's getting all gooey-wooey like that? Love that. Now, let me show you another trick about this fried chicken. Eventually, what's going to happen, we took the first four pieces out, the temperature was perfect. Then we're going to get the other four pieces in there. And if you look at this thermometer, which I really, really recommend that you get one, you can see that the temperature's dropped. 50, 60 degrees because we put fresh fried chicken in there that was at a different temperature. You, on, you with me on that? So you got to, you know, it's a food of love thing. You, you got to take a little bit of time and you got to kind of, a, you know, look. See, you got to turn the chicken around, you know, for really good fried chicken. I don't know any good fried chicken that, like, takes four or five minutes to make. So let it marinate. But I will tell you this. You take a little bit of this mac and cheese in the center here like that, okay? See that? And then we'll go get us a couple of pieces of this cooked chicken here while the other's frying. Doesn't that look fantastic? Get a little bit of that buttermilk fried chicken here like that. A Little bit here. Well, this is my portion. I'll just take... One right over there like that. And there you have it, folks. Comfort food. Unbelievable. All right? There you have it. Hey, I'm Emily Gossie. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow.